Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here for the final nine of the 2023 Throwdown the Mountain 11 presented by Sun King Dis along with Discraft. We've got a great battle brewing here. Morgan Linz out in front. Natalie Ryan has fallen off the pace by four strokes. Jordan Linz on the card along with Lauren Butler. As I said, our third and final round championship Sunday here at the Grand Canyon Disc Golf Course located just outside of Brooksville, Florida. We're ready for the action. Hole 10 plays as a dog leg from right to left. You're ultimately trying to throw it relatively straight to right about here. And then it starts climbing up the hill. It's two very straight shots that are relatively open, assuming you're staying on the fairway. A little turnover action there by Morgan. Jordan going to the backhand. And well placed. Lauren Butler comes in at 15 over to start the day. She's two over on the round thus far. That's not going to help, though. That is over the OB fence on the right side. And teeing off fourth on our card is Natalie Ryan, who started out the day as your co-leader along with Morgan. She's taken bogeys on holes six, seven, eight, and nine. That's largely been the difference between her and Morgan. And Lauren not necessarily loving this. She got to bring it in a full two meters off the fence, but it looks like it's going to push through, and she may set herself up for a good position at that point, hoping to get up and down and saving the bogey. Morgan found the inside route here. If you don't make the corner all the way to the ideal landing zone, all you can do is hope to land somewhere where this little shortcut is, and we'll see if Morgan's going to take advantage of it. As they said, a great shot here on 10. So looking like a bogey five is still possible. And just perfect position here for Jordan. And that's going to leak off to the left. She may have an obstruction with that tree, but you couldn't ask for a better tee shot. Forehand effort is going to be low there for Natalie. She should still have a look. Ultimately, it's going to be a pitch right next to the basket looking at a par. Morgan trying to extend her lead, and she's going to do just that. Now a five-stroke lead with eight holes left to play. And Jordan crawls into the tree on the left-hand side. During one of our rounds, Nate Perkins had asked if this was what I feel like a, a death putt anywhere near this green because it falls off to all the sides. And I don't feel like it's as much as of the elevation as it is all of the random trees that are 20, 25 feet from the pin that provide all this obstruction. And it didn't seem to matter for Jordan. Solid birdie. Jordan's now one under on the round. And Natalie is in for the par. We'll have to see if there's any way that Jordan can keep charging. She started off the day eight strokes behind Natalie. Now she's six. And we're going to head over to hole number 11. Certainly one of the fan favorites out here this weekend. Also playing as one of the easiest holes on the course. 478 feet downhill. You're trying to find the gap that the drone is going directly to here. I don't know if that juggling worked on that preview, but either way, you're trying to find this gap. Hopefully, 
get somewhere near the mouth of it so that you could be looking maybe along eagle bed or at least a birdie bed. And Morgan's turned over over to the left-hand side. We'll see if Jordan can get there with the backhand, and that's too much. Does kick out for her, but definitely needed that flatter. And that is pushing hard right. There's a, a wall, kind of the edge of the property over there. And not exactly where you want to be. Too much Anheuser as you pan back to the basket, but hopefully she'll have a lane to get to the pin. Let's see what Jordan can do. Oh, it's just perfect. Gets her a putt from 25 feet. Morgan off on the left side, almost pin high, but quite a ways to go, and she's hung up. I don't think she's going to have much of a putt from over there, and this is just a terrible spot to be over on this right-hand side, up against the wall, and the forehand's not clean for Natalie, so... Not looking like she's going to be able to pick one up just when Morgan looked like she might leave the door open. I'm not sure that Natalie's going to be able to take advantage of it. Somewhere deep in circle two here for Natalie. Good bid off the front of the cage. This plays as the fifth easiest hole on the course. Averaged .18 below par. So Lauren not really even wanting to give it a run. She's going to settle for the par. and Not much of a look over there for Morgan. Jordan to be the lone birdie on the card. Very nice, as she joins Kim Hatcher as the only other birdie here during round number three on hole 11. The rest are in for par, and we're going to head over to number 12. 450 feet. Trying to navigate through this initial gap. You're trying to get over from the left, push to the right here, get up on this platform, this ledge, and then you'll have essentially a straight tunnel to the basket. Much more difficult hole than we've seen in years past. Oh, and a good kick here for Morgan. She won't be mad about that. A late kick. Looks like two or three of them, in fact. That's going to push to the left side. Now, we've seen a few competitors, when they get off to the left side, they try to fight through over there rather than navigating the way most people would try through the fairway. So we'll see if she's forced to make up a new lane from over there or if she'll be pitching back into the traditional fairway here. Mostly clean most of the time there for Morgan. Natalie trying to go up and over. And that's got some success to it. As you can see, just completely in jail over there on that left side. Right. 
So Lauren will have a look down the gap. So hopefully she should she should be able to get up and down from there. Thinking about sashimi. Yeah, she oh, and she may have gone too far. Looks like she's got a patent pending to try and find the lane. Mm. So hangs that one up too high and wide and now struggling. That's a forehand skipper for Morgan. Here's Jordan. Funny uh, how authoritative we get with our discs. Constantly yelling that, at them to do things. And clearly I'm not picking on Jordan there. I think that's in general. Sit down, get up, skip, get new. Heiser, turnover, hit a house. It's about a million different things that <laughs> get yelled at dis in flight. Thank you. Solid. No problems. Picking up the par there for Morgan. This hole averaged 4.55. It was more common to see some kind of over par stroke than anything else on this hole. That's going to be a double for Lauren. We see the par tap in for Natalie. So Natalie still five back. Two thirds of the way through, six holes to play, and she sits five back of our leader in Morgan. And we head over to 13, a par four at 515 feet. This there is this direct route if you're playing right up the middle of the fairway, or if you bail out anywhere to the left. That's going to open up a lot of your options. Might take a little more distance and carry to get there, but it will open up your options if you go off to the left. Can't go too far left. You see. Homer Simpson, the man doe sign there. So you must navigate to the right of Homer. But once you get past it, if you go out to the left side, you've got more options. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Maybe a little too left, but she'll have plenty of options from over there. Nice controlled flex. That'll be just fine. And nothing wrong with that either. Great shot there by Lauren. Oh, sorry. Oh, and she's got a perfect line to the basket. Takes advantage. Beautiful shot. Setting herself up for a birdie. Lauren currently sitting at five under for today's round. Big forehand comes up short and left for Morgan. Jordan had similar plans to what we saw from Lauren a moment ago, but that one is pulled, let go a little bit too late, connects with the tree, and then carries off track. And Natalie goes right up the gut. Also has a little bit of a backstop, so that should leave her in position for birdie. Here's Jordan. Very solid recovery. That should still net her the par.
think Morgan's a little bit more of the forehand specialist typically. So Jordan excited about the solid approach shot there with the forehand. And the easy tap in birdie. And fun fact, just two birdies on the day, and you saw them both. Both Natalie and Lauren walking away with the only two birdies in the FPO division today. On a hole that averaged more than a quarter stroke over par. And if you need any help, whether uh, it's on the golf course or more so probably with your website, web design, logos, SEO, whatever the case might be, uh, a great group of disc golfers are ready to help you out. They're over at Swarm Digital Marketing. Reach out. David's been my contact, but I know anyone there can help out. There's a link in the description of the video that'll bring you right to them. You don't even have to tell them at that point that the disc golf guy sent you. They'll know, and they'll give you a free consultation. Wow, and that looks like it dropped down, which would be a favorable kick if so. Asking for it to kick out, and you see it just barely get on that right side edge of the short grass. If hole 14 is not your favorite hole on the course, then you need to tell me which one is. I, I know it's <laughs> it's a good problem to have when you can't decide which your favorite or which is the signature hole. Sometimes those are the same thing, signature and favorite. But if this isn't your favorite hole, I need to know in the comments what is your favorite. You guys have seen plenty of coverage here from the weekend, so I'm sure you got these dialed in. <laughs> Lauren saying that's so adult of her just to be disciplined and use the patent pending just to find the center of the fairway. And I really can applaud that. It's easy to go for that hero shot, especially when you have more than a thousand feet to cover on this hole. And you're thinking, well, I don't want to have any short throws. But Lauren's setting herself up for position. So hopefully she can take advantage of it. That's going to be left side for Natalie. Three different manufacturer sponsors here on the card representing the four women. Natalie with Neptune, Jordan and Morgan, both with Discraft, who's also our events presenting sponsor along with Sun King. And the Sun King also sponsors Morgan and Jordan. And Lauren Butler, I believe a recent pickup from Millennium Disc. Had that not hooked up, uh, I think she would have been in trouble there. But the fact that it hit the tree and basically dropped straight down, not punishing at all. Jordan gets over on that. And Don't scare me like that. <laughs> a sigh of relief. Are you serious? Uh, flirting with that right side out of bounds. And Lauren, not as fortunate. I believe that does fall over the edge. There's a cliff, and then a few hundred feet beyond that is actually the long tee for hole number 13 which our MPO competitors played from throughout the weekend. The third from Natalie. Should at least let her have a, an easy pitch up to the pin after that. A 
when you think about closing out on this course, at least on the FPO side, and what they have to face to close out the last few holes, hole number 14 here is the second most difficult hole on the course relative to par. That's how it's been playing. Hole 15, the next one they play, is the third most difficult. And then the final hole they play is the most difficult. So <laughs> in the last four holes of golf that they play, four or five holes, three of them are the most difficult. Lauren, not messing with the elevated pin, which is very understandable. You could easily see a few putts go back and forth. Uh-oh. So now Morgan, after running it, does have a comebacker, and that is just all too easy to do here. You know, you miss, you don't grab any metal, and then you have a tester putt coming back, and Morgan in trouble of giving him some strokes here. Jordan, on the other hand, she's still going to take the bogey, but solid putt to keep it at that. Morgan's going to tap in for the double bogey. And the lead coming into this hole was four for Morgan, and that was just cut in half. She takes the double bogey. I started playing disc golf with my family when I was eight years old. When I was 16, I got my first job as a cook at a bowling alley, and that's when I made my first batch of beef jerky. As I got better at throwing, I also got better at making beef jerky. Everyone told me they loved my jerky. After 15 years of making my beef jerky as a hobby, I decided to make it available to everyone. Double G Craft Jerky. Give it a try. You're going to love it. Double G ain't lying. You are going to love it. As we head over to 15, a par 4, 546 feet. You've got the OB fence line on the right. And then you start to climb up just a little bit of a hill here that ultimately will finish back up and to the right and Natalie as I just said has trimmed her deficit from four down to two on just the previous hole in fact it was five two holes ago now down to two and a well-placed tee shot Jordan going with the backhand And as good as I think we just saw out of Natalie, I think that looks even better for Jordan. And dare I say Thank even you. better here for Morgan? Beautiful shot. 15, again, plays as the third most difficult hole on the course. And Lauren as well. I You would have no idea that this hole is that tough after seeing four perfect tee shots here from our lead card. This is exactly where you want to be set up, in the mouth. And you can see the pin up on the kind of on that right side there. So she needed more turn at best looking at a par probably, unless she has a throw in. And Natalie may have pushed actually just a bit long on her initial tee shot here. And that's going to be left side. Not sure that had a chance to fully get the flight out of it for Morgan. Here's Jordan. Natalie at even par for the round and Jordan at even par for the round. Meanwhile, Morgan sits two under. So Natalie fighting alongside this right side tree line. And as you can see, 
doesn't keep it clean. So depending on her look, she may have a bogey in her future. Lauren with her look for birdie. And what I should clarify, actually, I believe Lauren went out of bounds to the left. So that was her right next to the basket. And she should have a tap in bogey. And Natalie way down from where I thought she was and still not a clean shot. So I think it's three consecutive shots that we've seen from her where she was caught up on that right side. A jumper by Jordan doesn't connect. So Morgan gets that to drop. And what I think I realized after the fact, I was not on the course for this, but after the fact, I feel as if there was a provisional called at some point because there was some uncertainty as to the OB line on the left side and where exactly it comes into play. So we just saw Jordan tap in. That was for her par. Natalie's going to tap in for bogey. And now Morgan is going to go to another shot, uh, and she's going to have this. When it's all said and done, it looks like bogey was ultimately what was decided. I know they then talked to Mike Barnett immediately following this hole, and he had clarified exactly where the OB rule is and how it comes into play. And if you need any kind of indicator as to what's going on in disc golf, the players' meeting... Go out there, subscribe. They will send you an email, give you updates. They're writing articles as to the weekly goings of what's going on in our sport. And now we're on 16, just three holes left to play. Shortest hole that they'll find on the property, 163 feet, slightly elevated. Jordan. Okay, that's going to sit down for her. So Natalie still two strokes behind Morgan. Three holes left to play. Oh, that's tracking right to the pin. Thank you. A legitimate ace run there for Morgan. Natalie from middle of circle two. Oh, and the fadeaway from way out in three-point range. Natalie Ryan, a huge birdie putt that brings her back to even par on the round. And right now, one behind Morgan. Lauren has a lane. That's going to give her a chance at saving the par. Now, Jordan cashes it in. Getting it done out here on hole number 16. I know it's a short one. It's not necessarily the easiest by any means. And <laughs> end over end, no problems for Lauren to save the par. And just when we thought Morgan would gain a stroke after we saw the drive by Natalie, she's going to remain two ahead, and they have just two holes left to play. Means we're on 17, 322 feet. OB all along the left side of this fairway. Short right also has OB. Not only if you go off to the left are you going to be out of bounds, there's a chance your disc could go 
75 or 80 feet down a cliff as well. So you're not going to immediately retrieve it, that's for sure. And I feel like if you see anyone overcommit or or pull something, off to the right is going to be the common place because you're so deathly afraid of that left side out of bounds. A nice low-line drive. That's a near park job there for Natalie. That's going to put some pressure on Morgan here. Again, Morgan, two-stroke lead, two to play. And to me, that feels like just a really safe, conservative shot, maybe even saying, hey, I'm playing this for par because I don't want to mess with that out of bounds on the left-hand side. And I absolutely love the play. It is so easy to throw out of bounds here. What Jordan wants, Jordan gets. Very similar approach here for Morgan. Also, right there, those should be a pair of pars. And Lauren <laughs> said, I almost accidentally made that. And the birdie by Natalie means she's going to be one behind Morgan going into the final hole. It's been quite a comeback. I think just two or three, maybe four holes ago, Morgan had a five-stroke advantage. Natalie has battled back. Jordan's in for par, trying to just lock down that third-place finish at this point. And Morgan is in. So Morgan, who's two under on today's round, holds a one-stroke lead. Shout out to our friends at the Distinguished Doodle. 20% off. All you got to use is the code DISCGOLFGUY, and that'll get you 20% off all of their products, which are all organic products made in Arizona, and they support disc golf because they're disc golfers, and I love it. So we're on 18, 688 feet downhill. Natalie loves it. Wow, and a red flag. Natalie had said she thought it was perfect, and it actually does go deep, and it finds her in the long OB, which is exactly where we saw her in round number two. And that's going to be out of bounds for Jordan. Again, Jordan, really comfortable. We know that Ellen Widboom is playing a pretty solid round. She's kind of fighting for that fourth place position, but she's still a ways back from Jordan. Does this check up in time? It does. So Morgan inbounds, huge advantage over Natalie Ryan. Inbounds with a one stroke advantage. And you see the wind blowing hard from left to right. And ultimately that's gonna get a green flag, an enthusiastic one at that, I love it. And I'll say with that, thank you to all of the incredible volunteers and supporters and sponsors employees, everyone, Mike Barnett, the entire crew at Sun King, uh, my crew that I was rolling around with all weekend, Michael, Paul, Dylan, and my incredible hosts, Dwayne and Susan Reeder, would not be possible without you guys. So Morgan playing for position. She's looking to just get up the hill and walk away with a par. She's thinking right now a par is all she should need to secure the win. That's barring, of course, Natalie throwing this in. So because she's out of bounds, Natalie can bring herself in line with the basket directly back. Yeah. 
And she's confirming that everyone is clear from the green and that they are good with the spot she's about to take. So this is Natalie throwing three. Oh, and up and over. Natalie is going to be within 15 feet of the pin, essentially guaranteeing her the four. Jordan not loving <laughs> what she had to do, that, but she's just playing for position. So Morgan, a par secures the win. And she's safe, but well off the mark. She's going to have a long putt for her par. Lauren with no problem getting onto the top shelf. Full 18 at average, 2.55 over par. Morgan can put this in for the win. Lauren going to pitch up to secure her placement. And Natalie Ryan, who was down five just a handful of holes ago, has battled back and with that par shoots one under on today's round. And barring something crazy here, we should be seeing a playoff. This is going to be Jordan. She's tapping in. Jordan would go on to finish in third at 12 over par. And Morgan in for the bogey. But more importantly, her advantage of one stroke erased. And with that, Morgan and Natalie are going to a playoff for the title here at Throwdown the Mountain 11. Lauren will finish in fifth. Ellen Widboom will finish in fourth. Thank you so much for the help this weekend, Ellen. We've got heads and tails. Yep. Call it. Tails. And our tournament director, Michael it Barnett. It's your choice. I'd like to throw a second. Okay. Flipping okay. the coin and repping the new, one of the new owner's shirts, Dylan Cease, who just opened for the White Sox on opening day a few days earlier, back on Thursday night. Ten strikeouts. Nice work. So Natalie wins the coin toss and opts to go second. Morgan. Thank you. Just a bit deep. That's going to be a difficult putt. Yes. And Natalie likes it. She's short of the basket on the 231-foot hole, but she is in great position. And right now, Morgan doesn't have a look. She is just trying to get up and down, hoping that this playoff can continue. She's right next to the pin. That will be an easy tap in for the par. Natalie for the win. And she gets it. Natalie Ryan, your champion in playoff fashion here at the 2023 Sun King Throw Down the Mountain, presented by Discraft. One heck of a battle. Congratulations to her. Congratulations to all of our competitors out there this weekend. Morgan Linz will finish in second, her sister Jordan in third, and Ellen Widboom, fourth place. Like, share, subscribe. Love one another. Be kind to one another. Thank you guys for joining. And we'll see you at the next one.